Hello, my name is uh, Antti Pulkkinen and I work at the uh, Catholic University of America and NASA Goddard Space Flight Center's uh, Space Weather Laboratory. And in this tutorial uh, I will discuss the concept of magnetic field lines and how that concept relates to the propagation of charged particles and especially in the context of uh, space weather we're interested in uh, how these magnetic field lines relate uh, to the propagation of uh, solar energetic particles or SCPs. To show you an example uh, uh, of some of the field, these um, uh, mysterious field lines, uh, here's a, a space with a product from uh, our integrated uh, space weather uh, analysis system, uh, ISWA, uh, uh, that can be accessed by typing the URL iswa.ccmc.csfc.nasa.gov. Um, what is shown in, in this product is uh, a simulation of the uh, propagation of coronal mass ejection in the interplanetary medium. Uh, the simulation is provided by Wangshi RG and Leo model. Uh, what is shown here in the leftmost uh, uh, panel uh, is at the center of the, uh, 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 the, the display is the sun and these circles here uh, indicate the locations of the inner uh, planets or for example this yellow circle here indicates the location of the earth and what is shown with these dashed lines here in this uh, simulation is the uh, uh, now the magnetic field lines provided by the, the Wangshi RG and little model. So what we will uh, be uh, discussing in this uh, tutorial is uh, how do you define, uh, how do you build uh, these kinds of magnetic field lines and why are they important uh, uh, for example in the context of uh, solar energetic particle or SAP events. Okay. So <clears throat> let's start by uh, looking at how uh, we define uh, a magnetic field line. So uh, first we will have uh, a magnetic field um, and by the way uh, the concept of this field line applies to any vector field but now uh, in the context of this tutorial we will be focusing on discussing uh, the field lines as they relate to, to magnetic field. So we will define, uh, start by uh, uh, building or defining uh, a magnetic field, which we will call here uh, B. It's a vector field. Uh, it will vary as a function of uh, uh, space. Uh, we will focus here only to two-dimensional uh, situation where the, the magnetic field varies only function only as a function of x and y uh, coordinates. The generalization to a uh, three-dimensional situation is, is uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, our magnetic field as a function of uh, space is, is defined in, in certain uh, domain uh, which we will draw here and, and then we will start to evaluate this magnetic field within this domain. So uh, to uh, start to build a magnetic field line we will need to select uh, uh, an initial point. So let's take this point here as our initial point and let's call it uh, x0, uh, y0. So the first uh, task is to evaluate our magnetic field at this uh, initial point x0, y0. So let's assume that the magnetic field in that point uh, points towards this direction. Then we will take a step from our initial point in the direction of the magnetic field to get to the second point where we again evaluate the magnetic field and get the magnetic field direction and then we will move uh, in that magnetic field direction to take uh, uh, the, the, the second step where we of course then again evaluate the magnetic field and uh, find the direction of the magnetic field at that point and that is the direction where we will take our next step and then you will repeat this procedure over and over again and essentially move in the direction of the magnetic field until you reach uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the final point uh, uh, of the, this process uh, which we'll call here uh, uh, x1, y1 which is now the uh, end point of this process. Okay? So, what magnetic field line is now, nothing else but 
this path that we have shown here or drawn here between these two points x0 y0 and x1 y1 so if you draw a continuous line along the path that we will be we've been walking here that is our magnetic field line okay um, let's take a look uh, next a little bit more rigorous uh, mathematical definition for the magnetic field line uh, uh, and, and for that let's draw uh, coordinates here coordinate system first um, uh, here's the uh, y-axis here's the uh, x-axis so here's our x uh, here's our y let's draw them again y and let's draw a, a magnetic field line readily here and <clears throat> what the the field line of sort of a rigorous definition of, of, of the field line is that at any any point p uh, let's call this point p here the tangent of this field line is parallel uh, 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 to the magnetic field in that location b uh, location p so if you evaluate the magnetic field at that point P, the direction of that magnetic field has to be uh, uh, in the direction of the tangent of this uh, field line here. And in this case, we will call this field line uh, uh, as Y as a function of X. So the, uh, 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 the, the tangent of, of this field line can also be uh, defined uh, uh, with the help of angle uh, theta. Let me make a little bit more space here. Uh, <clears throat> oops. So let's let's draw the magnetic field a little bit larger here. Bay at point P. Okay. So uh, here is our x uh, uh, x axis direction. So uh, the direction of the magnetic field can be also defined in terms of uh, angle uh, theta. And this angle theta uh, is, is uh, by means of the, uh, the uh, magnetic field direction, can be uh, defined uh, in mathematical terms as a tangent of theta uh, equals to the ratio of the, the different components in the magnetic field. The ratio uh, by component over bx component of the magnetic field at this point p, okay? And now, uh, if this uh, field line is y as a function of x, uh, actually, uh, what this uh, tangent of theta uh, uh, also is, it's also uh, uh, the derivative of this y, uh, uh, a function of y, uh, with respect uh, to dx. That's actually a slope uh, uh, of this curve y uh, at point p. All right? So, this is now the mathematical expression that enables us to solve the y, uh, uh, the curve y as a function of x, and of course that y now then is our our field line. Uh, uh, this can be also expressed uh, uh, in another form. Let's let's uh, express it as a dy uh, x equals uh, now by over uh, b x uh, times the, the uh, differential of x and now of course you know when you start uh, integrating uh, this equation say from from uh, x x 0 to x 1 you can start uh, to build uh, the, the uh, uh, analytical solution for for the, uh, the the curve y which is now uh, the field line defined uh, uh, by the other structure of the magnetic field B here. So that's the sort of a, a little bit more uh, or the rigorous definition for, for magnetic field lines and that of course the same concept generalizes to the to, uh, th third dimension also. Um, okay, so now we have discussed what is a field line and let's uh, uh, discuss next how uh, this field line uh, uh, relates uh, to the behavior uh, or propagation of charged particles and that brings us to how this thing relates to uh, uh, solar energetic particles. So let's again uh, uh, 
uh, assume that we have a magnetic field B, uh, B, and uh, now in this case the magnetic field B uh, 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 will have magnetic field lines that we draw here. Uh, this is now family of curves. Curves now, of course, if you go back to the original picture, you can select a number of different initial points where you start to uh, track uh, or trace the magnetic field to build the magnetic field line. And by doing that procedure a number of times from a number of different initial locations, you can build uh, a family of uh, a family of, of magnetic field lines. And then that's uh, what we are drawing here. Uh, <clears throat> Now, if you take uh, an electron, uh, let's let's uh, draw draw an electron here uh, and then give a little bit of color for that electron. Uh, you you drop that poor electron here. Uh, what will happen is that it will start to gyrate around that magnetic field line. Okay, so you drop an uh, electron here; it will start to gyrate around. Uh, the, uh, the the magnetic field, and the same thing happens also for positively charged ions. They will gyrate uh, the the magnetic field or the magnetic field line a location different direction. So what happens here then is that if you have uh, let's say we are looking at this field line here, uh, we have a uh, initial point x zero, y zero, and an uh, end point uh, uh, say x one, uh, y one. And if we now take this electron, oh, let's, let's go back. And, and we'll drop it here in this location and kick it a little bit, what will happen is that it will start to gyrate and propagate along this magnetic field line. So really the, the primary meaning or the, the importance of, of the magnetic field line concept and in terms of propagation of charged particles, both electrons and, and, and ions, is that uh, these charged particles like to follow these magnetic field lines. So in, 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 in a sense, a uh, uh, magnetic field line is the path away uh, uh, along which the uh, charged particles will propagate. Okay? And that's really the, the significance of the concept of magnetic field lines uh, uh, in the context of, of for example, solar, solar energetic particles. So if we go to, to our initial picture here, uh, let's clear this out and, and uh, build a, schema, a schematic illustration of the situation uh, uh, where we have sun here in the center. Uh, then let's uh, draw location of, for example, the Earth here. Let's make our blue. Uh, let's give it a little bit of a labeling here, so sun is here, uh, earth is here, okay, and then we'll draw a couple uh, field lines from here, uh, let's bring it a little bit thinner, so let's start the, the so let's select the, the first initial point for uh, starting to build a field line uh, from this location on the, on the solar surface, and, and let's assume that that field line, as we follow it, goes through the orbit of the Earth. And then the second field line, uh, we will start a little bit further away and, and follow that field line. And, and then we can have a family of, of, of curves, curves from different locations of the solar surface. Uh, now, from the viewpoint of, of uh, energetic particle events, if we have an eruption on the solar surface this uh, at this location, and we will have a generation of fairly focused beam of charged particles. These charged particles will now uh, propagate along uh, or close to this magnetic field line, uh, which will take the, uh, this, this uh, beam of charged particles uh, from the source location all the way to the orbit of the Earth. Okay? However, if we have an eruption on the solar surface at this location, and, and, and we have another focused beam of charged particles generated from that location. Those charged particles will propagate along this field line and will not hit the orbit of the Earth. So now you can quickly see that uh, uh, the, uh, the magnetic field line and, and the magnetic field connectivity with respect to source region and, and the, uh, the various locations in the interplanetary medium, for example, the location of the Earth, is very important in, 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 in determining uh, which locations in the interplanetary medium are exposed 
to a potential uh, enhancement of, of uh, charged particle radiation as a result of eruptions uh, at various locations uh, on the solar surface. And that is really uh, the, uh, the, the, the one of the major uh, uh, significances or major uh, uh, points uh, of, of building these magnetic field lines into, for example, in the interpreter medium. Uh, and, and, and with respect to how they relate to the, uh, the propagation, generation and propagation of, of solar energetic particles throughout uh, the interplanetary medium. And that ends our uh, tutorial.